Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Man, we're back on video with a new, new little thing here. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. You know, shout out to everybody that watched our first episode and was bearing with this. That was our first, last week was our first episode with video. And I will tell you, video is a different beast. It is, but I think we got some new heat for all the for all the audio listeners out there. You might want to just check it out this week. If if you were a little disappointed last week, check it out this week. It's better. It's better. Way better. Way better. We're 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 improving at a light speed rate because you know we're we're we one have all the, the beautiful listeners out there that we're letting us know what we could improve, what they wanted to see, and 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 and, and quite frankly, this is what we're manifesting. So if you are now just tuning into the NFT QT show. Welcome. This is uh this is this is new for us. This is our second rodeo on video. So if we get some things wrong, bear with us here. Calgary, I'm gonna let you uh, take it away. But as as always, before we get started, before mm -hmm. we get started, this episode of the NFT QT <laughs> show was brought to you by the NFT handbook. Calgary, you got your handbook? You got your handbook? Of course I got my handbook, my hey, friend. See right there. So if you if you've been rocking with us for as long as our first episode, you'll know that we've been promoting this book. I wrote the book. It's a good book. If you want to know anything about NFTs, as far as just getting in the game, this book will get you there and it will teach you how to buy, create and sell NFTs. Uh, you can find it in the airport. You can find it anywhere books are sold. It's a bestseller in a few countries. And, you know, we've had tremendous luck and success with that book because it is a resource if you want to get into the whole concept of a non-fungible token. And we've seen lots of great insights from readers around the world. So when we do do this shout out from now on, we're going to start using your photos that you send in. So keep sending Definitely. the photos. Absolutely. Uh, Calgary, what's the, what's the wave, man? What's new? Man, you know, I, I was, I was scrambling for NFT topics uh, for this episode, but I was just like, Hey, there's a lot of great content, a lot of great insights out there on Twitter. So I think we just, we just shout out some Twitter people. All right. Some of their tweets and we just, we just flow with it. Is this a new format? This is a new format, my friend. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. What's the first topic? NFT job creation, my friend. Job. Job, creation. NFT job. Wait, this is actually an, an, an on point because I don't know if you saw it, but uh, the CEO of Chase Bank, you know, Jamie Dimon had said that he's never seen, uh, it was, I was watching CNBC. He said he had never seen such, uh, su such, such such crazy things happening in the job economy right now. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's got a, you know, we are coming out of a pandemic, right? You know, we're still in the midst of it. That's you got all that going. And then you got all this digital asset stuff just booming. And as a result, man, you got people living in their basements, just making thousands, millions doing jobs that we've never even heard of. Uh, I want to shout out, you know, Le uh, Leonidas ETH real quick. Um, None of these jobs existed just five years ago. A metaverse architect, on-chain researcher, DAO community manager, NFT CPA slash lawyer, Web3 front-end engineer, heck, even an NFT archaeologist, man. No, 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 no. That, that's real. Like, you know, the crazy thing about everything that people are, are saying about NFTs and jobs and, like, what's possible, it reminds me a lot of social media in 2013. So a lot of people don't know this, but I started as a marketing manager at a company called Eat Street. And Eat Street was like at the time, one of the coolest tech companies in the state of Wisconsin, because Eat Street, for many of you all that don't know, it was an online food ordering service, but this is back in 2012, 2013. So this is even the precursor to Uber Eats. And I was there and at the time, like my skill set was social media, like, you know, rem rem like just to remind people in 2012, like Twitter was a new thing. People didn't know about online marketing in the, in the, in the aspects that we know it now, like blogs were a big deal in 2012. Like I remember we used to do campaigns with mommy bloggers and, and we would just like, we would, we would be shocked at some of the, the pull and reach that they had and just that overall influence. And there is every now and then a big shift in the tech space that creates new professions. We saw it at the, at the, the, the late nineties, when you saw 
the whole concept of a graphic designer really changed from something that was print to digital. So you had Photoshop really come in and manifest like this whole computer graphics era. And that's created things that we still use today. Like Canva is building off of those same skill sets, right? Uh, even what you would use on the iPad, like Procreate is using some of those same skill sets that were introduced in the late nineties to generations even today. And what we're seeing when we come from then to now is that trend hasn't changed. A new technology is, is, is out there. It's known as NFTs. I've got a virtual real estate broker. Like that's crazy, bro. Same no, I'm like, you're, you're, you're laughing. I'm like dead ass. I actually have a couple real virtual real estate brokers. So depending on how much money you want to spend, if you came to me and said, Q, I need a parcel or Q, I want some, some, some metaverse land, or I need some real estate to do this cool thing. I actually have people that I, I can connect you with via text. I can connect you with via email. And like, I could get you, I could get you right for as little as 10 K to a hundred K to a million. Like I've definitely match make people like the hmm. highest, the highest transaction I think I did was like 10 mil. Or not, I didn't do it personally, but like broker. Wow. That's yes. uh, fascinating. I, I didn't know that there were virtual real estate brokers. I know we've joked about it. We've talked about it and how like there needs to be virtual real estate agents and like, you know, people who go in and spruce up a, a, a real estate plot before you go and sell it. But man, I didn't oh. know you were actually using one. Yeah, bro. That was like almost 20, what, 27 weeks ago we were talking about that. Like 27 yeah. weeks later. Almost a half a year later, it's actually a real thing. And like the episode one, action. episode one of the podcast, we were talking about it. Exactly, exactly. So it's 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 different. But like when you show me a tweet like that, I'm I'm I I, I see it. Like this is happening. And like if you are thinking about getting into NFTs, I will tell you go get that book, the NFT handbook. Or no, Ryan, you got yours. Where's uh Where's your book? Go get this book right here. It's on audio book for the people that don't want to read. Learn the vernacular. This is going to teach you about everything from what a smart contract is, the blockchain, what your wallet does, all that information that you might not know or you might have a fuzzy understanding of. We wrote the book so you can get up to speed. But once you're up to speed, sure. if you've got deep industry expertise, whether it be accounting, legal, uh, music. Dude, even just, even just being able to be present on Discord at all hours of the day, dude, like a Discord manager, everybody, every project needs one of those. And yes. like, they're hard to come by, you know? And, like, and, and they're expensive, right? Like if you're yeah. a decent Discord project manager or community manager, it is without a doubt you could get 60K a year. For sure. Yeah. Without so, a doubt. Oh, for sure. So shout out Leonidas NFT, all these sure. different jobs. I mean... I mean, I think the metaverse architect, that's a real one. I'm seeing all, all sorts of agencies yeah. pop up. Doing I'm trying to get in that. I'm trying to get in that right now. I know you are. I know yeah. you are, my friend. I am. So, yeah. I really am. I'm really trying to get into the, the whole metaverse, like, architecture thing. Actually, y'all y'all know, y'all know, y'all know it's real because y'all y'all know I got, my, I got my headset right here. Ryan, meet me in the metaverse right now. I mean, I can if I really need to. Oh, if I really oh, need oh, to, oh, not correct. Oh, you got your headset too, so you know what's up. You know what's up. Yeah, real people know the metaverse is up next. It's on deck. So if, you, if you're not in here, you're already behind. But in order to get in here, you, you got to do the rest from these. We're going to do the rest from the headsets? No, 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 no. You know, this is the NFT QT show. This ain't the, <laughs> the metaverse QT show yet. We ain't there yet. For sure. We ain't there yet. Well, what we got next, though? What's For coming? sure. I wanted to run through a, a little bit of important NFT data real quick because I think it's, you know, it's essentially been, you know, a year since the the hype of NFTs has come about, right? You know, okay. and, and and it's good to take a look back and see, hey, like, really hey, how far we've come. Mark has this quote, Mark Cuban, and he says, sales cure everything. He only cares about sales. So if you want to point to me about wallets, that wouldn't pass muster. Let's, let's, let, what do you, what you got? You got sales? I got you. We got sales to start. We got some sales. That boy got some sales. Yep. So, All right. Transaction volume. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, starts in 2019, but if we go back to 2015, I think it was about what, maybe, maybe $10,000, $10,000 in NFT trading volume. Uh, probably, probably, probably wasn't much, man. Yeah. But nah. so for the listeners, 2019, you had 8.6 million. A year later in 2020, you had 85.7 million. Then in 2021, 19.6 billion, bro. Wow. And then in the first 11 days of 2022, OpenScene alone has done 2.3 billion. Hey. What do you think of that? You know what that tells me? What's that? We're not done yet. 
NFTs are not dead. I NFTs agree. are not dead. I couldn't Those agree. PFP projects? People gonna, all, all the PFP people are going to hate me. I, I, I rain on PFPs every week. Yep. What is, uh, you remember those, uh, the fake Instagram Rolex Instagram accounts? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake watch buster. Yeah, fake watch buster. I mean, we need a PFP buster, right? Oh, we do. We do. A rug pull buster. Mm. Hey, if you're, if you're watching this show, please go go create that Instagram account that fits to make a wallet to get the ENS domain. If you don't know what an ENS domain is, go get the handbook. Go get the handbook and go learn what an ENS domain is and go get you some money. For sure. So Q said, you know, NFTs are just getting started. We got a little bit more data to, to prove this point. A report from the Financial Times approximated that there are only around 360,000 NFT holders. Only wow. 360K. Now, I'm assuming that that doesn't count Axie Infinity because all those people hold NFTs and there's like 2 million users. Right. Who are just buying one-off assets, not for games or anything. 360,000 NFTs. And furthermore, 80% of the total NFT value out there is held by only 9% of the people which is about 2.7 million NFTs owned by only 32,000 people. Or so 32, that, people. that tells me though, right? That means it's still very incestuous. That means that like we haven't gotten a, away from the concept of like massive whales, right? Like you still got the, the whales, like whale shark, uh, Amir, like you got all these people that are just hoarding NFTs and they, they're getting value, but they can only transact pretty much with themselves right now. If, yep. if 9% of the community has, uh, what was it go back to that, that, what was the stat? Uh, let's bring it up. It was 9% of the community has 80% of the value. Yep. That ain't even that, the Pareto principle, which is 20, is the 2080. I hear, I, I hear all anti-capitalists out there going, oh no, bad NFTs. No, not another one of these. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's, 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 this is fascinating data though, right? This is the data. So I'm glad that we finally have data because when we were writing the NFT handbook, there wasn't, this data wasn't available. Like this was no. a year ago, I was writing this and the stuff that you're seeing here, we didn't have. So it's almost time for a revision on this, but I'm going to wait a little bit. So go get, go get, go get this, go get this. For sure. I mean, when you look at the whole market, I mean, it's, it's really dominated by OpenSea. We all know that. We know that to be true. You know, you can kind of hop off and go onto different blockchains and things like that. But I think everybody is looking and waiting for that OpenSea killer. Wait, 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 wait. You talking about the killer whale? I mean, essentially, it would be a killer whale, right? Yeah, yeah. Open it's sea. an OpenSea, so you got a killer whale. You ever seen like a whale shark, like a real one? Is a whale? Wait. A whale shark is a real thing, right? Yeah, it's a real thing, bro. It's it's crazy. Like whale sharks are like dope. Like I saw, I, I saw, like I was, I was in Cabo over the uh, vacation, and like, yo, they really got these things called whale sharks, and and, and they're like real gangster. Like they like, you gotta Google, it. you gotta Google it. A whale shark, huh? A whale shark, man. It's it's a slow meeting. It's I mean, it's a slow moving like like whale. Like it's tight. All right, let me Google this thing because now, now, now you've you had my attention. Now you piqued my interest, or you piqued my interest. Now you it's, got my attention, my friend. The, the thing is large though, which is crazy. Like it's slow, but it's large. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's definitely that's definitely a shark and a whale got, got down and dirty one day. <laughs> Bro, like it's it's huge though. Like it's huge, and like you can you can go check them out. Like. Uh, in, in Cabo, and like it's just it's just different. It's All right. Different. Well, this ain't the Animal Planet NFT podcast. So let's talk about these these Open Sea Marketplace killers. This is a great tweet I saw uh, by our our friend uh, Maddie, the DCL blogger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever an Open Sea killer? It will be built by active NFT traders slash investors. These are some of the features that he's looking for now: global bids, yep. built-in rarity data, okay, sales data. Uh, which I think, I mean, OpenSea mostly has. Um, chat function, ability to leave a message. That's not a yep. bad idea. Uh, simple to use. I feel like OpenSea is decent, but I'm sure that somebody can make it simpler. Uh, can take extreme traffic loads, definitely. Built-in whitelisting, built-in mint caps. Yep. What do you think about those? Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm into this. I think that like, you know, what, what, what 
this tweet shows me is if I were working at OpenSea, I would look at what, you know, DCL blogger is posting because he's definitely a, a influencer and a tastemaker and, and shout out to his project, the meta key. If you haven't, you know, gotten plugged in and, and seen what they're doing over there, you are missing out because I think the meta key is one of the more exciting and interesting NFT projects and, and communities and NFTs. And they're always doing something interesting and, and just like just generally fascinating. But beyond that, if I worked at OpenSea, I would be looking at that tweet and I would look at our roadmap. And if our roadmap didn't align with more than 80% of that tweet, I would ask myself why. And if there was demand that I saw within my own, you know, internal metrics, because Maddie doesn't work at an NFT marketplace, he doesn't run it. So maybe he see maybe the way he's envisioning it, only, you know, point one, like, you know how they said 9% of the collectors, mm -hmm. uh, 80% of the value, like maybe he's, he's, he's envisioning like it, a, as a part of that 9%, but that 9% is, 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 is it's, it, I mean, they're a very it's influential. Yeah. They're a very influential and authoritative community. But I don't think that that's how we're going to get to the next, you know, million wallets per se. I it's think you're right. I think, and, and, and Richard, uh, Richard.eth has a great perspective on that. He says, feels like we're going to see a number of NFT marketplaces or OpenSea killers, but I think the real magic happens once we see verticalized marketplaces tailored towards specific communities and content types. I couldn't agree I with that more. more. I agree 100% with that. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we are seeing it, right? Um, for sure, for sure. You know, like just a few that, that we've been shouting out over the, uh, over the year or over the past, you know, half year, uh, async art, you know, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Pro, pro, programmable dynamic NFTs, yep. um, X tingles with their ASMR NFTs. Yep. Um, a new one that's everyone's really hyped for is uh, skin flip, which is going to be just, uh, gaming NFTs. So all these okay. different assets for games and it's going to be blockchain agnostic, right? So like. I think we are starting to see those like very niche marketplaces, right? Where it's not like an eBay where you can find a little bit of everything everywhere. Um, right, right. Much more like Shopify's. Right. No, I, I think that that's the right way to think about it because you're going to see, you're going to be able to do more, right? And like all of this stuff can bubble back up to OpenSea or your favorite, you know, mass mar market NFT uh, marketplace. But in the beginning, like, if you're trying to go and get users, you've got to appeal to different communities. And the same way that Facebook grew in the early days where they started off with, you know, colleges, legit universities, they were like, okay, we're going to get Harvard. Now we're going to go get Yale. Now we're going to go get Princeton and we're going to get Stanford, et cetera, et cetera. And then once they did the, the college circuit, you know, they had the niche community there. They went and did the high school circuit and then they started to expand it and, and, and it just kind of eventually because you had college and high school, all of the parents that wanted to follow their kids in college started to get Facebook accounts. And it was a network effect. I think the network effect that is here uh, with, with, with NFTs is it, it is going to largely be found on the collector base, because if you're a collector and there's a utility there, or there's some inherent value that you've seen, you're, you're going to stay. And I think that the most successful NFT projects, as we've talked about in the past, the value is driven by the community. If you don't have a community or you have a fleeting community, you, you barely have non-existing, non-existing value. So we've seen those, those prices just, just, just take crazy downturns. And the, the thing about like just niche marketplaces is it, it allows you to keep the community contained. Yep. Like think about it like this in web 2.0 era, cause everybody likes to hate on web 2.0. We had the same thing pop off. What was SoundCloud? It was basically everybody who didn't didn't have a relationship with the gatekeepers like yes. the emis or whatever or you know the atlantic records yes exactly it was the it was the unsigned hype yep. it was the chance the rappers before they were chance right like you need a place for the underground to meet and convene and that's where your community starts you couldn't have a chance the rapper as you know him today without a soundcloud so do you think open c is like a soundcloud right now Ah, that's a good question. That's a real good question. Nah, you know what's out, you know, what, if like, uh, so for my music heads out there, they're going to remember this, but like, I don't think OpenSea is, is SoundCloud. I think the taste level of SoundCloud was all over the place, but it was a little bit more refined. I think what OpenSea reminds me a lot of is Reverb Nation. I don't know if you remember that site. 
So, so Reverb Nation was like teach me. the precursor to even SoundCloud. It was like you were an underground artist. You would create a Reverb Nation profile. Looked a little bit like a MySpace profile. But the, the cool thing is imagine MySpace without top friends and all that good stuff. And it had like all your gigs, all your videos, all your, all your, your songs, all your merch. It was all on one page. So it was like a website in a box for an artist or an electronic press kit for an artist. But it was all on one page. You could have your bio, your about page, all that stuff. And OpenSea reminds me a lot of that. Whereas like, huh. you know, you have like basically an electronic press kit uh, for your NFT or for your, your collection profile, uh, right in one, all in one. And there's, it's, 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 it's very vanilla. Like, and that's, that serves a purpose, right? So like whenever I do a new research on an NFT project, or I want to see at scale what, what's going on, I go to OpenSea and, and, you know, I check it out. But when I'm, when I'm, when I, if I wanted to go a level deeper or I wanted to see the community, you know, I don't have that, that, that SoundCloud appeal where like, you know, on Reverb Nation, I could learn about the artist, but I couldn't really learn about the, the fans. Mm -hmm. On SoundCloud, I could learn about the fans because before the bots came, you could used to comment on a track. So if you said it was trash yeah. or this drop wasn't it, you know, people would leave a comment right there on the way for them. And like at the timestamp. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like that would, that would trans, that would transcend like generations because you would, you could, I could go back now, 10 years later, 15 years later and go look at the comments that, you know, my 15 year old self thought was dope. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, open sea killers. I think that they are coming. And I do think it'll be niche, niche marketplaces, but I want to move on. You know, I, I, I got a tweet from, you know, one of your, one of your favorite tweeters out there. Who you, um, you got, what we got to talk about. So we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about NFTs and, and how Legos, like NFTs could learn a lot from Legos. And, uh, oh, man, is it Ragsy? It from? Oh, it's not Ragsy? No. You gotta eat the Lego master. If you're going to do anything with Legos, I don't want to hear uh, it. Uh, Ragsy, you're right. Ragsy, <laughs> I don't want to know about it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel bad. I, I don't even, I mean, we talked about her in the book. You're right. We about her in the book. How'd we not put Ragsy in this one? Dude, uh, dude, Ragsy. Shout out to Ragsy. Man, I, you know, shout out to Ragsy. But... I love Ragsy. Ragsy makes amazing content. She's killing it on TikTok right now. And, you know, I see you got Lee Jane, so it's hard to hate on, on Lee, bro. So. Let's yeah, for it. sure. I mean, Lee, Lee's got theories, man. Lee, Lee is official, man. Like, Lee is beneficial. She's leading the creator economy. She's making it so that every single creator out there knows what's up and has a formula on how to, like, basically make big bucks from what they do. So if you are a creator or you're making anything and you're listening to this because you're trying to learn more about NFTs, that's great. But if you don't know, like, economies of scale, business models, and just what's changing between then and now, Go follow Lee Jin and go back and read all of her stuff from back when she was at Andreessen Horowitz to now because Lee's got heat. I mean, she yeah, wanted to people to rework Kevin Kelly's uh, 1,000 True Fans theory and, like, actually get away with it. Think about how many yep. people have touched that and, like, most people are like, nah, 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 Kevin Kelly. But she touched it and it was like, Lee Jin, Lee yep. Jin. I mean, she even did an NFT version because she did the hundred true fans, yeah. Which was I forget what plot, like what technology she talked about with that. But then she did the NFT version where it was like the one true fan or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I love that. Um, but nah, Lee Lee's got a Lee's got some, an interesting take here about how NFT collections could learn from Legos. Um, yeah, Lego. Yeah, so so I'll break it down. Legos have network effects. Each new user who buys them. And each new collection purchased adds value to the existing owners because they're all interoperable and composable. Yep. Very true. Uh, new generations of Lego players often get bootstrapped via hand-me-downs, making it easier to be inducted into the community. Um, I don't think we've quite seen, like, you know, someone passing away and then getting, you know, an NFT collection. But, I, you know, we are going to cover that a little bit later. And I do think that that will happen a lot. Uh, and then finally, there are different price tiers of Legos. So price discrimination can happen among super fans versus casual fans. But importantly, there are low barriers to entry for newcomers. Right? No, I mean, I, I agree with everything Lee is putting here. I think it's an interesting use of, of network effects. Like I, when I think of network effects, I don't always think of Legos, but no, uh, you know, but it is true. I mean, like, cause essentially the more 
the more Legos you add to your collection, the more you can do with them, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think same, same is true for NFTs, right? If I only own one board ape, yeah, I can change my profile picture. But if I own a board ape, I own a whole bunch of art from super rare. I own like some, 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 some Solana punks. I can now go create a gallery I can go and, and do giveaways. I can do a lot of different things. Right. My point here though, is like, we talk about accessibility of NFTs. Obviously this, this market is, is expanding. Like we have the data that we can back into and say that it's not dead. If you want to get in, you want to create accessibility, just go start making NFTs. Like, I feel like in February, bro, in February, we should just do an NFT drop one a day. We should do, we should bring that back. Let's do it. We should bring it back. Um, I'm saying it here. You, I, I need the community to keep me honest. I know y'all are going to tweet at me and get at me, but Ryan, I need you to help also help me. We're just going to do it. And we're not going to stop this time. Yeah. I mean, network effects, just like Legos, I suppose. Are we going to make all of our NFTs accessible like we did the first time around? Yep. And, you know, I'm not going to drop, I'm not going to announce the drops because when I announced the drops last time, it was a few of y'all that was cheating. That was cheating. They was cheating, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was I mean, you know, like the first six or seven, they went out instantly. And then I think the eighth one, I was like, I have to get one of these NFT QT collections. <laughs> Yeah. And I had cheap. insider information, of course. I had to tell Ryan that like, yo, I'm about to drop it before I told everybody else, because Ryan was like, man, how can I not get one? Like, why, like, why are they selling as you posted? And I was like, it's a true story, but dang. And so, I mean, how, yeah. How can the, how can the senior producer at NFT QT not own a single NFT QT? It's like the designer of Yeezy not owning a pair of Yeezy stuff. Yeah. It just don't make sense. It did make sense. So I, I had to, I had to make sure my, my man's had one. I don't actually, I think I own one. I had to buy my own NFT off the marketplace. Cause I, I, I couldn't, I, I mean, I couldn't keep them. Like the offers were coming in. It was crazy. So it was, I mean, my whole point on accessibility is just go create NFTs. Like it's not hard. You can, there's resources out there. You don't have to read our book. Like I'm not going to show the book. Like you can, you can go watch a YouTube video. You can go listen to an audio book. You can go uh, learn by just doing it, but go, go do this stuff because the people that do this stuff now and stick with it, you know, it's only one year old, the industry. So if you stick with it for one year from today onward, you've been in the industry for 50% of its lifespan. The OGs right now are one year old. Talk about a one year old OG, bro. Think about that. One year old OG. Yep. Yeah, like this <laughs> topic, man. I, I, you know, I could, I could pontificate for it forever. I know you can. So we're going to go a little bit dark here, but what kind of light. Um, I want to talk about essentially how are we going to pass along NFTs when we pass away? You know, this is, this is a question that's being brought up a lot in tech right now. So in iOS 15, I think it's point two, right? Uh, I think, uh, let me see. Yeah. So basically in iOS 15, uh, it's 15.2. Apple's got a legacy contact feature that will allow you to access someone's data after they've died. Um, and it allows you, it, you, it, you have to set it up before, while you're alive, obviously, but it lets approved family members or loved ones have access to your, your data on your iPhone after they've passed. I don't know how it works and, and what the functionality is, but the thing that is fascinating to me here is Apple, you know, they, they're a really, really big company. You know, uh, I think they, they've at some point passed the $3 trillion uh, valuation, which is insane. Yep. But when they do something, it resonates. It wakes people up. It makes people think about things differently. It took them until iOS 15 to get to this point. But what do you do with the digital data that you have, the digital collectibles that you have? How do you pass on that data? I think that that's a trend we're going to see over the next few years uh, just become more and more uh, a reality. But what's up? What's this? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've got people writing about it. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. We got Adam Frisch, I think his name is, uh, Estate Planning for NFT Collectors. He's got an okay. interesting Medium article out there. Um, pretty much just about like, Hey, there are ways where you can, you know, pass along your seed phrase without 
basically writing it down in your will and giving it to someone, you know, you can put it in certain safety deposit boxes. You can scatter different, you know, different parts of your seed phrase around different things. You can give codes to like, essentially like, you know, make people have to crack into it or whatever. Right. Um, right. He talks about it. I think he, he also mentions his book, crypto asset inheritance planning by Pamela Morgan. I definitely want to grab that. I'm interested. Uh, but no, I think it's, let's see if we can get Pamela on the show. Like, I think that that would be dope because this is a topic that we're all going to need to know a little bit more about. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think what's, when I was sitting here thinking about how would I pass along my NFTs and you think about all like the, the centralized ways you could do it, right? You know, you could just really, you know, ha have someone who, who you really trust, give them the keys to it and being like, Hey, when I pass along, I want you to pass this here. But what's like, what's the web three version? What's the decentralized way that we do it? Is there a way where we can write a smart contract where it says, Hey, like when I pet or, you know, when, when I pass some, something, you know, triggers this mechanism where it sends all of these to this wallet address or that wallet address. Man, I've seen people, uh, put RFID chips in their body to unlock and open the doors. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying, is it possible? Like, I mean, we've got all types of wearables, all types of implantables. Like we're going to get to a world where, you know, we're going to start seeing, uh, not just transhumanism, but biohacking and not, I'm not talking about food. I'm not talking about vegetables and things of that nature. I'm talking about people are going to start hacking their body and like the, like programming their body or adding functionalities to their body that communicate with devices in the real world. And, yeah. and, and it, what you described just, just now sounds like, you know, something that could be, be actually a realized invention in the next. Uh -huh. oh, Interesting. Years. So you're saying like implant the hardware wallet into somebody's body or something like that. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're getting crazy, but like, you know, it's, it's, you kidding. I mean, yeah, I just, there's some things, there's some scenarios I could think of. I think these ideas though are actual good ideas. So if you want to discuss them, DM me, but, uh, that I do have ideas and I think that these could be actual companies probably. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, uh, I, it, it's gotta be a service. If there's only, yes, yeah. there's, we said there's 360,000 people transacting NFTs right now. Think about all the people who have crypto. I mean, we're talking about, you know, probably yeah. close, getting near a billion people. Right. And I mean, if you've got a significant amount, uh, and you want to really protect that stuff, you know, ledger makes sense to some people, but you know, that the whole like implantable NFC RFID chips, like, you know, protecting that information by encrypting it and then, you know, creating some type of two factor where your, your, your actual physical hand has to be there. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a heck of a lot more secure than, than, you know, me throwing something on a, on a ledger. Uh, mm -hmm. device. And I'm not hating on Ledger. I'm just saying that like, you know, Ledger is, we, we've seen what that looks like with flash drives. Yeah. I remember the RSA uh, keys that they used to give you uh, for high net worth individuals at the bank. And it was like a, it was like a key fob and it had numbers on it. You know, my dad had one and, you know, he thought it was the coolest thing, but I always thought it was like, dude, this is the dumbest thing ever. One, it shows every hacker, you know, who has money in their account. And then two, like, it, it forces you to put this lame ass lanyard on your keychain that, that, that like, if you don't have, you can't access your bank account. Hmm. Yeah. That doesn't seem like the best idea. I mean, I don't think carrying around a ledger key hardware wallet on you is the best idea. And I also think that you should have access to your crypto. I think off oh, cold storage is a great idea. You don't want to store it all on chain or all on a, on, on a hot wallet. But, uh, if you want to get to your crypto, you want to do some things. You want to make sure that stuff is, is accessible as fast as possible because when these markets tank, they tank, bro. Like, mm -hmm. they tank. This ain't the stock market. It yep. ain't a gradual decline. It's like we were just, we just all witnessed the, the fall and rise of, of Bitcoin just, just in the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best thing you can do is uh, go into hibernation mode, you know, go up into the woods up in, you know, northern Minnesota, not bring any tech and come back in a couple of years. <laughs> See where Bitcoin's at. <laughs> See where it's at. See where it's at. What, what we got next, though? For sure. Um, I wanted to cover one more thing. I'd never heard this term before. It's called DSI. Decentralized. DSI, my friends. Decentralized science. 
what kind of a world decentralized science? I mean, this is it's gonna awesome. be everything, bro. We got DAOs, we got D5, we got D side. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh what they gonna what, I mean D size is messing my whole head up right now. Yeah, so basically lots of talk about you know, Aaron Wright, lots of talk about DeFi, but very excited about DeSci, decentralized science. I was looking around, I was like, what, what's decentralized science? I never heard of it. This dude, Vincent Weiser, he put together a really great resource on like all these different de decentralized science projects. And I mean, it's fascinating. There's this one called the Vita DAO, which is funding longevity research and initiatives. Uh, PsyDAO, funding psychedelics research and initiatives. Um, you know, there's this thing called Atoms, which is a protocol for everything uh, for decentralized science, from prizes to publishing. I mean, it's like, it's a way bigger industry than I thought. I never even heard of it until today. And here we are with all these different projects. I'm going to shoot you the link real quick so you can check it out. I would love that. Because I feel like you would... Uh, you would really get into some of these projects. No, and you know, some of my favorite actual NFT projects, a lot of people don't know this, are in the sci category. Really? Yeah. Um, I like it when NFT, like when research papers are turned into NFTs. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, like I think that that's like just genius. Like because... Yeah, like UC Berkeley did one, I think. Yep, yep, yep. And so like what's, what's genius about that is you're taking something that is a digital file that, you know, obviously countless researchers have spent a lot of time on. So this isn't something that, you know, is, is just, you know, it's just a run of the, the paper mail. This is like something that people spend their, their livelihoods for many years, just putting information and gathering and collecting and put it into a thesis. And then you turn it into some type of art and then you sell that. And then that, that the proceeds from that go to raise awareness and, and, and revenue and, fu and funding for uh, a scientific project. And I think that that's a great example of a, of a growth loop. Mm -hmm. Well, I think like what fascinates me, cause there are obviously a lot of, a lot of problems with the pharmaceutical industry, just with overcharging and all, all that nonsense. But like, if we could, you know, transport 20, 30 years in the future, do you think there would be a Dow that could compete with like a, you know, a Pfizer or whatever, you know? where it's essentially, hey, like they, they, they pool their resources, they fund a couple labs to do some research. And then, you know, the, if it ever goes to market, the initial funders are now reaping the rewards of this thing that they help fund instead of necessarily just going to a central court. Yeah. I mean, I'm a part of some early DAOs and like, there's, these are questions that people are, you know, proposing. I know you're a part of a DAO that's trying to buy an NBA team. Like mm -hmm. there's just, there's just, there's, these are, these are big, hairy, audacious goals that are out there and we'll have to see, like, I don't know the future in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. I think, uh, I definitely, we got to get, we got to get somebody who's really familiar with decentralized science on here. Cause I feel like there's a lot of like underground projects that are just like, Dude, let's, run it. Away. let's run it. Let's go deep. D side. We can do a D side month. We can make D side March. month. Yeah. We can do March. You know how they got March Madness. Yep. I want to do March all DSI if Let's there's enough it. projects, if there's enough projects. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I mean, DSI Summit, I'm sure someone's going to start it, you know? Hey, that's a good idea. It's a real good idea. Definitely. So we're going to close it out on a, on a real light topic. You know, y'all are living, y'all are getting ready for Web 3, but me, I'm getting ready for Web 4. You know, Web 3 was, or Web 2 was a company. Web 3 is a crowd. And our man, Peter from Levels is like, Web4 will be finally closing our computer and going outside. <laughs> All right. Think of that. <laughs> I mean, right now people are afraid to go outside. Yeah. So Web4 is not possible right now, huh? No, I mean, we got to get COVID in, in, in place first and then we can figure out what Web4 looks like. Definitely. Well, I mean, I thought it was a of uh, a productive one here, man. I, I hope that our, our listeners who are also our viewers now give us some comments, let us know what they thought about this, uh, you know, kind of shouting out a lot of other people's theories and just rolling with them. No, I mean, like this is a, this is a new format for us, right? Like this is what the show has evolved into. You know, when we first started this, it was the whole concept of 
you know, sharing our insights, our research, and just putting that stuff up. That's why we put together nftqt.com and really just wanted to quickly share all the information that we were seeing from other people and, and, and just that was happening on the blockchain. Because when I was writing the NFT handbook, uh, one of the things that that stood out to me is there was a lot of projects that just couldn't go in the book, um, not only because of the speed at which they were occurring, but I mean, like the, I had to turn the book into ed actual editors and like, you know, it had to go to print. And so I just, I wanted to include, and we did a lot of revisions and we added a lot of people, but it was like, Hey, like, you know, if you only read the book and you didn't know what was happening right now, I felt like your learning would be incomplete. And so this is a part of that evolution, right? Like we could spend a lot of our time, a lot of our resources on improving the website or doing this or doing that. But our roadmap was, you know, build a community, uh, you know, get the book out there. The the people that have bought the book, thank you. You know, you've helped make it a bestseller to this this date. We've been doing great on the, the, the charts just in general. And like, you know, NFTs are a thing and, and it sounds like, you know, a lot of people are recommending our book. So we're forever grateful. But this resource here, nftqt.com, this is for y'all. So, you know, this, this format, this change, like we need more feedback as Ryan said, but at the same time, like we want to keep evolving as the, as all of this stuff evolves. And, you know, it's beyond me, it's beyond Calgary, it's beyond, uh, even the things that we said in, in the book, it's a community and in the best way we could, you know, use our power and, and use the influence that we have, have built right now is to, 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 to create another platform for some of the people that don't have voices, but have great ideas. Um, for some of the people that have, you know, interesting thoughts, but, you know, maybe they are a part of that 9%. And so, you know, we're in the room, you know, we've bought NFTs. Ryan knows I waste an ungodly amount of money almost at weekly on NFTs. I'm not going to talk about what I bought but this past week and this week, but <laughs> all we're going to say is, <laughs> you know, we're a part of that 9%. We're helping keep it the market afloat, but it would suck if we only talked to the people that were in the 9%. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we like to, we like to dumb it down, have a little fun, you know, not take it so seriously and, you know, just throw, throw an NFT party. For sure. For sure. NFT party. Mm -hmm. I like that. We might have to, we might have to get into events, NFT events. I, I would love to do that. All right. Well, uh, we in February, y'all heard it here first. We do an NFTs one day a week or not yeah one oh not one day a week we're gonna do it every day every day every day of the week one one day a day <laughs> one day a day yeah we're gonna we, we got nfts we're just gonna be dropping them joints this is gonna be a challenge i need to start working on that now get ahead but, i think uh, we need to get some collaborators my friend oh man dude I, I i think we just can do it ourselves all right let's do it yeah let's just knock it out man like let's not because you know we're gonna get we're it's black history month man this is true. Hey, yeah, man, I got to do it for, I got to do it for my people. <laughs> All right, man. I'll catch you in the future. All right. Yeah.